Hello, everyone. This screencast is going to be a brief playthrough of homework one on word relatedness. I hope to give you a sense for the problem that you're tackling and also our expectations around the homework questions and the bake off. So let's dive in here. The overview is just explaining the character of this problem, which is essentially that we're going to give you a development set of word pairs with scores and the scores reflect relatedness. The scores were produced by humans and we've just scaled them into zero to one, uh, where a larger score means more related in this human sense. And your task is essentially to develop a system that will predict scores that are highly correlated with those human scores, according to the Spearman correlation coefficient, which is the traditional metric in this space. So this is just some setup stuff for the environment. And then we introduce the development set itself, which is a pandas data frame. It's loaded in from your data folder. Uh, and it looks like this. It's got a bunch of word pairs, each with scores. As I said before, and these are the human provided scores. This is a development data set in the sense that you can make whatever use you want of it. You can train systems, you can explore your results and so forth, because as you'll see for the actual bake off, we have a fresh test set that you'll make predictions on. There are about 5,000 words in this development set. Um, you can train on any subset and you can expand the data set to other things if you want to include them as well. It's really up to you to decide what you want to do because this is all about making predictions on that brand new test set, as you'll see later. And I will just say that the test set has 1,500 word, word pairs with scores of the same type. And in terms of the overlap, I'll also tell you no word pair in this development set is in the test set. So it's disjoint at the level of these pairs, but some of the individual words are repeated in the test set. So you do have some vocabulary overlap. In this code here, we load the full vocabulary for this thing, which is you know, all the words appearing in all the pairs. The vocabulary for the bake-off test is different. It's partially overlapping with the above, as I said. Now, if you wanted to make sure ahead of time that your system has a representation for every word in both the dev and the test sets, then you can check against the vocabularies in any of the vector space models that we've distributed with this um, unit. Uh, so for example, if you ran this code, you get the full task vocabulary. And if you have a representation for every word in there, then you're good shape, in good shape when it comes to the test set. It's also useful to look at the score distribution. This will give you a sense for what kind of space you're making predictions into. And I'll give you the hint that the test distribution looks an awful lot like this dev set distribution. It's also worth being aware that there are some repeated pairs in the training set, some words that have different scores associated with them, and they're repeated, therefore. What I've done here is just provide you with some code that will allow you to rank pairs of words by the variance in their scores. And so you could decide for yourself what you want to do about these minor inconsistencies. You could filter the data set or keep all of these examples in. It's entirely up to you. I will just say that the test set does not force you to confront this issue. It has no repeated pairs in it. All right, and then we come to the evaluation topics here. So there's a central function you'll be using a lot in the homework and the Bake Off word related and disevaluation. And so there are some instructions about how the interface works. Let me just give a brief illustration. In this cell, I'm loading in one of our count matrices. It's the giga five matrix. Uh, and I'm going to evaluate that directly. So you can see in the next cell that word relatedness evaluation takes in our development data or our test data uh, and whatever vector space model you've developed as its two arguments. And it returns a new version of this input here with a column for the predictions you made, as well as this um, value here, which is the Spearman rank correlation coefficient. That's our primary metric for this unit. So here is the score that I achieved. Not so good. I'm sure you'll be able to do better. And here's a look at the new count data frame with that new predict column of predictions uh, inserted into it. And this is just another baseline here, a truly random system that just predicts a random score. And that's uh, even worse than the simple count baseline. Again, you'll be able to do much better without much effort. Error analysis, I've provided you with some functions that will allow you to look at what your system is doing in terms of the best predictions, in terms of comparing against the human scores and the worst predictions. And I am imagining that this might help you figure out where you're doing well and where you're doing poorly, and then you can iterate on that basis. And that brings us to the homework questions. So what we're trying to do here is help you establish some baseline systems, get used to the code, and also think in new and creative ways about the underlying problem. Our first one is positive pointwise mutual information as a baseline. As you've seen in the materials for this unit, 
pointwise mutual information is a very strong baseline for lots of different applications. And it also embodies a kind of core insight that we see running through a lot of the methods that we've covered. So it's a natural and pretty strong baseline. And what we're asking you to do here is simply establish that baseline. Um, here and throughout all of the work for this um, course, we're gonna ask you to implement things. And in general, we will provide you with test functions that will help you make sure you have iterated toward the solution that we're looking for. So you can feel rest assured that if you have meaningfully passed this test, uh, then you'll do well in terms of the overall evaluation and your code is functioning as expected. Next question is similar. So here now we're exploring latent semantic analysis. And in particular, we're asking you to build up some code that will allow you to test different dimensionalities for a given vector space input and try to get a feel for which one is best. Um, so again, you have to implement a function and then there's a test that will help you make sure that you've implemented the correct function in case there's any uncertainty in the instructions here. Next question, as I mentioned in the lectures, t-test reweighting is a very powerful reweighting scheme. It has some affinities with pointwise mutual information, but it is different. Uh, and this question is just asking you to implement that reweighting function. We've given the instructions here. You might also look in vsm.py, the module, at the implementation of pointwise mutual information because you could adopt some of the same techniques. I wanna emphasize that you don't need the fastest possible implementation. Any working implementation will get full credit but the code in vsm.py is really nicely optimized in terms of its implementation. So you might wanna push yourself to do something similarly efficient. But again, as long as your function t-test here passes this test, you're in good shape. And you don't need to evaluate this function. We're just asking you to implement it, but we're assuming since I've said that this is a good reweighting scheme that you'll be curious about how it performs in the context, context of the system you're developing. All right, for the final two questions, we're asking you to think further afield. Pooled BERT representations is drawing on the material in this notebook here, which is just an um, exploration of the ideas from Bombasani et al. 2020 on how to derive static representations from models like BERT. And so what we've got here is some starter code for you and a kind of skeleton for implementing your own version of that solution. Uh, and again, we're hoping that this is a foundation for further exploration for you. We've got the implementation to do here, and then a test that you can pass to make sure that you've implemented things according to the design specification. The final question is also really exploratory. It's called learn distance functions. The idea here is that much of the code in this notebook pushes you to think about distance in terms of things like cosine distance or Euclidean distance. But we should have in mind that the only formal requirement is that you have some function that will map a pair of vectors into a real valued score. As soon as you see things from that perspective, you realize that a whole world of options opens up to you. And what this question is asking you to do is train a k-nearest neighbor's model on the development data that will learn to predict scores. And then you can use that in place of cosine or Euclidean. We've walked you through how to implement that. There's a bunch of guidance here and a few tests for the subcomponents if you follow our design. Again, if the test pass, you should be in good shape. We're not asking you to evaluate this directly but we're hoping that this is a foundation for, for exploring what could be a quite productive uh, avenue of um, solutions in this space. And then finally, the original system. This is worth three points. This is a big deal here. You can piece together any part of what you've done previously. All that stuff is fair game. You can think in entirely original in new ways. You can do something simple. You can do something complex. What we'd like you to do here is not only provide the implementation in the scope of this conditional, so that it doesn't cause the auto grader to fail if you have special requirements and so forth. But we're also looking for a textual description uh, and a report on what your highest development set score was. The idea here is that at the end of the bake-off, the teaching team will create a report that kind of analyzes across all the different submissions and reflects back to you all what worked and what didn't. And as part of that effort, these system descriptions and development scores can really help us understand um, how things played out. And that brings us to the bake-off. So for the bake-off, what you really need to do is just run this function create bake-off submission on your vector space model. Here it's my simple one count df that I loaded before. And as a reminder that this is an important piece, you also need to specify some dis distance function. So the idea is that here, my bake-off would be the simple submission where I'm just doing a count data frame and Euclidean is my distance. And when I run this function, it creates a file 
CS224U word relatedness bake off entry. And you'll just upload that to Gradescope. We'll give some instructions about that later on. And that will be evaluated by an automatic system. And that's it.